In this video, I will be demonstrating how to make fresh pasta from scratch, and it's a fairly simple and straightforward technique that once you master, there's any number of variations that you can add to your dough to create your own unique pasta recipe. Now you're going to start by measuring out nine ounces of double lot pasta flour and the double lot refers to the fineness of the grind it's a very finely ground flour now you can also use all purpose it's not a big deal double lot is a little bit more traditional but also you'll see you know durum wheat is sometimes used in semolina and to this i'm going to add three whole eggs plus one yolk and the yolk is going to uh with the eggs total six ounces by weight now I'm going to turn the flour out onto a clean work surface and mount it up and make sort of a uh, flour volcano by indenting in the center and creating a large well. And into this well, I'm going to pour my eggs. I'm going to go back with the tines of my fork and scramble the eggs up, first breaking the yolks and then scrambling them. And once they are fairly well scrambled, I'm going to start to draw in the flour from the exterior of the volcano and continue to mix around until it forms something that looks like this, a flour and egg sort of paste. Now from here, I'm going to take my trusty bench scraper and scrape the flour uh, into the center of this egg paste. And this is just going to allow me to finally uh, or finish incorporating the flour in the egg and kind of uh, use a chopping motion. Now you'll notice that I don't add any salt to this dough recipe, and that's because uh, it's a personal preference. A lot of people do not add the salt. Uh, it's my belief that the salt in your pasta should actually come from your uh, boiling water when you go to cook the pasta. And you want to add enough salt to your boiling water to make it almost as salty as seawater. Now, once you've mixed the dough together and kind of chopped in the eggs and the, and the flour, you're going to have this, a sort of a loose, shaggy mess of dough. And if it's sticking to your hands and to your work surface, just go back, add a little bit of your extra pasta flour, and you're going to continue to knead until the dough is nice and stiff and it ha basically has stopped absorbing the flour. And once the dough has stopped absorbing the flour, you can scrape it off to the side and continue kneading for about one to two minutes. And this is just to form a cohesive dough uh, because a lot of the kneading will be done during the rolling process. Now, once the dough has come together after about two minutes of kneading, you're going to wrap in plastic wrap and allow the dough to hydrate for about 20 to 30 minutes. And this is going to make it easier to work and allow those gluten strands to relax uh, when you go to roll it out. Now, in the meantime, you want to set up your pasta machine. And here I have just an old school cheapo pasta machine with a C clamp. And you're just going to clamp it to the edge of your table. And I like to put a folded damp towel underneath it because it's going to help keep it from um, sliding around. Even if that clamp is nice and tight, it'll still slide during the rolling process. You're going to remove your rested pasta dough from the plastic wrap and flour both sides to make sure that it's not tacky or sticky. And then cut it in half so you can work in portions. And if you have a shorter work surface than what I'm showing here, then you might want to cut into quarters. Now you're going to set your pasta machine to the widest width, which is normally number one. One, and the width will go from one to eight, generally speaking, with pasta doughs or pasta machines, excuse me. And you're going to roll through that dough and fold it back on itself and then roll through again on the same setting on number one. And you're going to continue this rolling process for about uh, anywhere from 12 to 14 times each time folding the dough back on itself, uh, both horizontally and vertically. And this is going to basically be your kneading process. And it's going to help form the structure of your dough, making it nice and springy and silky. And this is what's going to give you a good, well-structured pasta dough. If you skip this process, then your dough was, is not going to have the proper bite and texture of a well-made pasta. Now, after about uh, 13 times of passing it through, your dough should look something like this. When you grab it on both ends, it should be somewhat stretchy, but it should also be springy and spring back on itself. And you'll notice it has sort of a silky, almost glossy sheen uh, to its surface. Now, at this point, you're going to dial down to number two which is the second thickest setting, and pass it through. And some people only pass it through once. On the number two setting, I like to fold it back and pass it through a couple more times. This is just going to ensure that I get the proper texture, and it really only takes an extra 60 seconds to do. Now, from that point, it's time to just start dialing it down. And uh, so this is number three. I'm just going to crank it through. And each time you crank the pasta dough through the machine, you're going to go back, dial it down. Uh, if your pasta dough starts to get tacky, or sticky, then you can just add a little bit of a dusting of flour and kind of rub it in. And each time you uh, reduce that dial or the width of your rollers, you'll notice that the pasta sheet is getting thinner and longer. Now this is rolled all the way to number eight, 
depending upon what you want your thickness of your noodles to be, you can roll it to number six or number seven. It all depends on personal preference and what your final application will be. And at this point, you're going to go back, add a little bit more flour to the dough itself just to make sure it doesn't stick because now comes the actual cutting pot, uh, process where we take the dough that's now sheeted and turn it into a pasta that we can then cook and eat. So some people will use the rollers on their pasta machines. I actually prefer to hand cut with my knife because I like, if I'm going to go through the, uh, the trouble of making pasta, I want to have some nice thick noodles that I can really enjoy. And so here I notice how the surface is nice and floured. Uh, that way when I stack the pasta sheets on top of one another, they're not going to stick together. I'm going to go back and add a little tiny dusting of flour right on top just for insurance. And I'm going to very loosely roll. I'm not going to crimp or pinch. Just loosely roll up the sheets together. And then go through and cut the noodles to my desired width of thickness. So here I'm cutting a broad fettuccine noodle, also known as a parpadelle. And this is one of my favorite forms of noodles to eat. Now, once your pasta is cut, go back, sprinkle a little bit of flour, and give it a nice shake. And this is going to make sure that uh, all the pasta is evenly coated with flour so it won't stick or, or clump together. But you also want to make sure you're shaking off any excess flour so your pasta doesn't have a, a gummy texture to it. Now, this can then be dropped into boiling salted water for about one to two minutes until it's cooked. For more information, you can check out this episode's show notes at stellaculinary.com slash kp20. And in a future video, we'll be taking this fresh pasta and mixing it with our homemade pancetta just to illustrate some of the possibilities and to get your creative juices flowing for what you can do with this newfound technique.